But they've all uh, buried their respective hatchets. And uh, going back out, Stone Temple Pilots, frontman Jeff Goot, who's been with them for a minute. And Soul Asylum is opening. It's called the Jubilee Tour. STP is celebrating the 30th anniversary of Purple and Live celebrating the 30th anniversary of Throwing Copper. LiveNation.com for the details. These are not on sale to you until Friday morning at 10 o'clock. So this will be uh, you grabbing them early. September 10th, it all happens at Blossom. And caller 10, these are for you. Uh, for you. Good luck. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. <laughs> Welcome to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Forget the Rock Hall. When does Pound Cake go into the Country Hall of Fame? My truck, my yeah. beer, my guns. Hit again. It's the Alan Cox Show. On 100.7 WMMS. It was an evening I shared. The sun to find out where we belong from the earliest days. We were dancing in the shadow. Little song from life called Lakini's Juice. It's the second yeah. track. Off that Secret Samadhi album, which I always forget how old that is. I just have no concept anymore of Secret Samadhi came out in 1997. I'm like, Jesus Christ. But a good album immediately dropped at number one. Boy, these guys were on fire after throwing copper. And so when Secret Samadhi dropped, it was their fourth. And um, it it went to number one immediately. I don't remember if they did this. Uh, I didn't stay for all of live at Buzzard Fest. I kind of dipped out because that was a long day for us. Uh, so I'm not sure if they did Lakini's Juice, but it's a good song, boy. It's a great album, Secret Samadhi. So uh, more tickets tomorrow around this time if you want to go see Stone Temple Pilots and live and uh, Soul Asylum uh, this fall. And again, those will go on sale Friday morning at 10 o'clock. Cavs win last night in Indianapolis. Five points over the Pacers, 108 to 103. Uh, Tomorrow night, they'll be back here at home to play the Miami Heat. 7 o'clock tip. You can hear all of it on MMS and on the iHeartRadio app. One of our Mississippi Bureau Chiefs who listens on iHeartRadio sent me a story about a giant 18-wheeler that crashed and it was full of bees. (laughs) know why bees is one of the funniest things to me i don't know because it's funny i mean bees an 18 wheeler carrying hey alan look at this i'm down near natchez mississippi jordan sent me this an 18 wheeler carrying bees overturned overnight around 11 30 p.m it took them until 7 a.m in the morning well that's redundant it took them till 7 a.m. to clean the thing up. Leslie, Grant Larson is on the phone for the National Park Service. I cannot meet with him right now. We are in crisis mode, okay? Larry, just tell him I need to reschedule because I am trying to fix my beehole disaster. Okie dokie. Wait, no, wait, no, Larry, don't tell him that. Don't mention my beehole. I thought his name was Jerry in that show. It's Jerry, Larry, Gary, they go through all of them. Oh, they do, okay. They keep changing. Uh, Parks and Rec, I think I need to dig back into and watch, like, from the beginning. Because that first season of Parks and Rec, was like, ugh. I mean, the first season of any show, it's really uneven. But I'm watching, I'm still in process of watching The Office from the beginning. And I'm halfway through season three. And um, Season three is a good season. That's where it really starts to take off. Is it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the one where he's like full on with Jan. And um, I just, I like the Rashida Jones season. Where she's she's so foxy. Well, she's in that season a lot. I know that's what I mean. Yeah. Like those those middle seasons because she's not in through the whole thing. Because then it pivots to Jim and Pam full on. But I like the Rashida Jones season. Anyway, Parks and Rec is great too. Thank you, Jordan, for sending me that. You know, I don't really have my ear to the ground on what's happening on the highways and byways of Natchez, Mississippi. Of course, my late father's home state. 
but it's not like I go down there. I don't have a reason to go down there. I don't have extended family there that I would visit. What's he late for? Shut up, Bill. <laughs> My dad's dead. Mary feels me. Just, Wouldn't it be great if we had our dads? It would be great if we could just call. Here we got a guy who just, you know, doesn't really talk to his dad. They don't have much in common, but he's still alive. Just burned in the time available. Mary and I, what we wouldn't give to be able to waste some time with our fathers. Don't spend time with my dad. Dude, I was walking to the subway today, and there was a fat guy in front of me. And I was like, man, my dad my dad would be walking if he could. <laughs> walking. My dad would be walking if he could. Yeah. Well, you got to set a high bar for yourself. There was an episode of House, too, that I watched the other day. It's, it's not lupus. Like, no, it's not lupus. They wake a guy up from a coma because he has to make a decision about his son. And he's, like, having to go say goodbye to his son because he's going to die or something. Wait, they have to wait. They wake the guy up from the coma about a, his son? There's a guy in a coma. Yeah. Okay. And his son comes to visit him all the time. And one day the son comes and has a seizure. So now the son is in a coma. So they have to wake the dad up oh. to get the dad's permission to do some kind of a crazy procedure. <laughs> he's in a medically induced coma. Yes. I see. So they wake up the dad. And the dad, him and House are having this heart to heart moment. And I started sobbing because the, the, Dad that was in the coma asks House, he goes, what was one thing you would want to hear from your dad? And I just blurted out, complete alone, nobody else is around. I just said out loud that he was proud of me. And then I started crying. Right. I was like, oh, my God. It hits you at weird times. <laughs> the weirdest times. It hits it. And everybody who's gone through it knows it. You know, they say, like, grief is, because somebody asked me, they were Comes like. Some waves. Yeah, somebody, I, I was talking to a friend of mine or something, and, and he was like. You know, how have you dealt with it? And I'm like, I don't know that I have. You know, yeah. it just kind of comes to you. And Well, I was, I mean, the first two years were really hard for me. Like, I was having full-on breakdowns. And then now. See what you did, Bill? I yeah, know. this is your fault. I know. I just... But now I've been pretty good, for especially like the last six months. I feel like I I've feel like after you got really the well. the uh, closure from the gambling thing, it was yes, a big thing. Yes, after I went to Vegas yeah. and and ve- and spread his ashes, it was after that I've been really really good with it. But then just just the other night, what, just what hit would you, you want to hear yeah. from your dad? That he was proud of me. <laughs> Sorry. You know he was though, right? No, I know, I know. But it was just like I'm saying that's how silly it is mm-hmm. that I'm watching a TV show with writers. Oh. Yeah. What did, what did they say on the show? Um, House said it it wouldn't matter, some kind of a housey response. Yeah. Where it was like, Ugh, even if you said it a thing, it doesn't mean it a thing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> ah. It's so stupid. Oh. Actions speak louder than words. Anyway, what, what, okay. House. What a crumudge. We well, I, I have a, I, I kind of project like through my dad, I guess, because I got, you know, I got my dad for a long time. My sister... You know, she's she's much, my age. Yeah, she's she's a little bit older than you, strangely enough. But um, th- that's, you know, she my mom lost her dad when she was 29. So my mom and my sister both didn't have as much time with their dads. But what gets me, and I, I guess I think of it through the prism of my dad, is when I see, like, things with, like, little kids. Because I'm not going to be, who knows how long I'll be around for my second grader. You know like what I mean? Grandparents? Or What's that? Saying, I was saying like like your daughter getting to know her grandpa, or you and your daughter. Me and my daughter. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because she knew she knew him a little bit. You know, she was cognizant of what was going on. Deal with your dad before your mom dies. Well, I don't know when that will be either. So I mean, I guess that's so like now. That sounds good, but I don't. You know. During the Vegas trip. You don't really decide to deal with it. You go, no. well. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. Uh, during the Vegas trip, on one of the days I was having a hard time and I called my mom. And my mom, she kind of yelled at me, but I thought it was very funny that she was just like, listen, if you have any things that you need to say to me, you better do it because I'm tired of you crying all the time. <laughs> I was like, mom. Thanks, mom. Just... I'm tired of you crying all the <laughs> well, time. Exactly like that. But You're really holding saying, up my day. She was saying like. You've had such a hard time with your dad because of unresolved feelings. And she was straight up like, you better get it out before I die. Because I'm not dealing, I'm not going to have your siblings dealing with you being sad for another two years. I just thought that was a very funny response. Kelly says, yesterday was a three-year anniversary of losing my dad. I was fine until you and Mary started talking about it. Sorry. (laughs) 
Ben ah. brought it up. Yeah, he did. He unknowingly. I guess that's what he was late for. I, I keep forgetting. <laughs> we went from bees to him kicking the hornet's nest. Mm. Little did he know. All right, well, let me pivot to something a little bit happier because I like this guy a lot. I'm trying to figure out the cut of his jib. This is a dad who got arrested after continuously calling the school and complaining that his kid had too much homework. This is Oxford, Ohio. Where is Oxford, Ohio? I was Ohio? just there. That's where Miami of Ohio is. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, down by Athens? Uh, no, it's by Dayton, kind of. It's What's in the school Cincinnati in Athens? And Dayton. Uh, that's uh, Ohio, Ohio University. University. Ohio University. Okay, so Oxford is near the Richard and Carol Cox Art Museum. No relation, and spelled C-O-C-K-S. Well, that's unfortunate. Okay, so it's right at the Indiana border, Oxford, Ohio. And the dad is is has been arrested because the school was like, sir, you can't keep calling. So they told him to call the cops. He kept calling the cops, and uh, they apparently uh, came out and grabbed the guy for something. So now he's got to contend with that. Bit of a you and coming uh, because of your employees. You know, the ones I pay for. Hmm. A father's desire, he says, to spend more time with his... That's what they sound like in Oxford, Ohio? Is there like, I don't That's I pay what this for guy the... sounds like. Oh, okay. I don't think it's what they all sound I don't know. like. All right. Child landed him in jail. Yeah, police tell us that what you just heard is Adam Sizemore leaving a message for the Oxford police chief. So he was arrested after police say he repeatedly called the school complaining about the amount of homework that his son was being assigned. Ken Brown tells us how those complaints eventually escalated into criminal charges. Yeah, we're talking about homework here. Too much homework and not enough time with his old man. That's what police say Adam Sizemore called his child's school to complain about. Basically, the parent didn't like that his child was getting homework, so he decided he was going to call the school and call the school repeatedly over and over again. Criminal complaints filed against Sizemore say he threatened the school principal, saying he, quote, better put his big boy pants on. <laughs> that constitutes a threat? They're not going to play that for us? You better put hear your this big guy boy say, pants on. I need to hear him say, well, put your big boy pants on. Uh, Come out here and face me. When the school stopped taking his calls, detectives say he started calling the police department. He calls dispatch, uh, I think it was 18 times, roughly. I want to talk to the chief. I need to talk to the chief. Call the chief, and you get the chief on the line. Page the chief. In the audio recordings from the police department, you can hear Sizemore become audibly frustrated that dispatchers aren't telling him their name and that he keeps getting the chief of police's voicemail and they can't speak with him directly. Leave a voicemail if he doesn't answer. I, I, I'm being very nice. Well, then come to the police department and we'll call the chief in. Can you at least tell me if he has his big boy pants on? <laughs> and then you can talk to him in person. But no, I'm not calling he, him on the phone. He can come to my house. I pay for him. He can come to my house. After repeated calls, Sizemore did not get the chance to speak with the chief, but he did get to speak with officers. Ma'am, I'd like to talk to the chief. Okay, and I have... Tra this sounds like the guy who called the Jimmy Dean sausage line. I can't yeah. feed a family of five. I got two well, grown like sons. They wear big boy pants. <laughs> <laughs> I got a plump wife <laughs> and a daughter who's stout 13. Mm -hmm. I got a stout wife, and my sons are doing too much homework. How are they going to do all that homework with no Jimmy Dean what, sausage? When are we going to have sausage time? In their bellies. <laughs> I'm trying to have sausage time as a family. <laughs> transferred you up there, so you need to leave him a voicemail. I'm not going to leave a voicemail. Okay, voice well, I'm going to send some officers out to your house to talk to you in person since you won't stop calling. Uh, oh, you know what that uh, means, talk to you in person. Took him into custody for telecommunications harassment as well as a uh, menacing charge. you to stick up for your <laughs> son. <laughs> and the dude's got, like, a fluorescent yellow vest on, so he probably works for, like, a, yeah, he's probably a lineman for the county or something, right? One of those guys. Here I am, a lineman for the county, and I can't even get the chief of police on the line. I'm trying to get more <laughs> sausage time with my family. That was Ken Brown reporting. Sizemore was charged with two counts, misdemeanor, first degrees, for telecommunications. The menacing charges he faced. Menacing. That's my favorite charge when somebody gets hit with menacing. M it's just a great. M U S I N G. <laughs> menacing to society. 
I love that because you know the guy was complaining, not that his kid had too much homework. He couldn't help him do it. <laughs> he couldn't help him do <laughs> it. You, you are say. absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. no the kid was like, hey, Dad, and he's like, I don't know. I'm trying to have sausage time with my family. This ain't arithmetic. <laughs> right. <laughs> Because this guy, he ain't homeschooling his kids. You know, there's a lot of these dummies out there that are like, I'm just going to homeschool my kids, you know. Trying to get my kid to do woke-ass math. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's some Asian. And I bet that the guy's complaint is that. I'm putting numbers and letters in there. not supposed to be letters and math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was the dad played by John Lithgow in that house episode? No, but he kind of looks like that. Yeah, he's, okay. he's like an older dude with white hair. I was going to say, that, that might be, I don't remember John Lithgow in House. That would have been no. a big get. No. To get. Uh, but, yeah, I just like that guy because you know he's like, I can't help my kid do his homework. Right. You no, know, that makes me feel as a man. <laughs> Not even that. He's just probably annoyed. And, I, you know, I don't know, but the. Uh, he was calling it. Or what if the kid put your big even, boy pants on? What if the kid doesn't even have that much homework? He's he just, just doesn't want to hang out with his excuse. dad. Yeah, yeah. Where he's like, "Sorry, I can't hang out today, Dad. I got homework," and goes and locks himself in his room. Well, that's mm -hmm. sad. Too. Or he's tossing that's on very or something. Sad. Yeah, he's that's young. a bummer. Yeah. Well, you I mean, gave my kid guy's... too much homework, and now he doesn't want to hang with his old man. This guy's attitude. Yeah, know? it doesn't seem fun to be around. This guy is all attitude. Got to give it up for him. All attitude. You, because none of it is, I'm going to, when I get over there, I'm going to kick your ass. It's not about that. It's just that they scooped him up because he won't stop calling. And well, the threats also add to But also, what what is the chief of police going to do about the homework and the, you know? Fire the teachers. Yeah, they, I don't know. They don't have authority over teachers like that. They can't say this. No. Change up your curriculum. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, you call the chief of police when there's improper dancing going on out in the street. Yeah. That's when you would normally get a hold of those guys and, and give them what fur. You call and you say, you better get your big boy pants on. You better get your dancing pants on. Yeah. We're rolling. Yeah, because there's improper dancing. Have you ever done ecstasy? Nope. You want to try it next time you're in town? Nope. Come on. I quit drugs two years ago. Even yeah, ecstasy. Yeah, dumb. <laughs> Sorry, dude. What if their ecstasy rolls mixed with Actually, meth? three years ago. 2021 was the last time I smoked weed. Mary, I actually have a question. This was, I meant to ask this earlier when you were talking about the cat, but since your cat has been your longest friend through thick and thin, is have you had do you treat your That's cat not even true though? You have older friends than your cat. Well, I'm nope. just saying she's been there while you were drunk and now that you're sober. Um, do you treat your cat differently now that you're sober, or does your cat treat you differently? Like, can your cat tell the difference between drunk mare and sober? I'm sure, mare? she can tell the difference of me not stumbling in at three a.m. Like, Duchess, where did a cat at? And they didn't pet you. Now it's more chill. Or me passing out and her thinking I'm dead or something. <laughs> Or the house being clean, that's a big difference. I wasn't ever, like, taking care of stuff at home. I'd forget to feed her and forget to give her fresh water and stuff. <laughs> oh She's what like, a great pet owner you were. I mean. I mean, when you black out five nights in a row, scooping the cat's litter box isn't exactly high on the list, you know? She's like, please stay sober for me. Yeah, I, I like having a now. meal every day. <laughs> forget to feed her. Did I, did I feed you? Why are you crying? It's like your bowl's empty or something, but you don't want to stop bitching all the time. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, all right. Your oldest friend. Imagine that. Yeah, my closest and oldest friend. Closest and oldest friend. The little ham salad. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, that's a nice thing to have. She's a ham salad. It's like a Disney movie. Yeah. Why is she a ham salad? Her name is Duchess. Kay. Okay. Let's follow this through to its logical conclusion, as Ellen would say. Duchess. Duchingham. Duchingham Palace. Ham Palace, Ham Salad. Oh, boy. Oh, okay. It does make sense. <laughs> yeah, you get it. <laughs> well, now that you explain it, <laughs> now that I have the visual flow chart, yeah, she's a salad. She's I'm all a about it. Little ham salad. And if you ever die in the apartment, she'll turn you into a ham salad. Fine with me. She'll eat your face. I'm dead. What's the difference? The dad was played by John Larroquette in House. Sure. From Night Court. All right. 
Alan, my father is a beekeeper and leases his bees for crop pollination. Mm-hmm. My dad is paid to do bee removal, so then people rent the bees. And then my dad... <laughs> And then my dad harvests the honey and sells it. His biggest headache, he said, are bears. Well, yeah, because they're always looking for picnic baskets. And they're always swatting well, at the love- giant bee hives yeah. looking for the honey. They love they love honey. Mm-hmm. I thought that was just in cartoons. Be, uh, bears really do like honey. Yeah. I, kn- I know like when like if an animal gets hurt and they have to euthanize it. I remember when I was a kid, they had to put a, a giant bear to sleep at the Lincoln Park Zoo, and they gave it, like, this final meal where they got, like, eight pounds of blueberries and cherries, and they covered it in this giant mountain of honey, and then they gave it, an for dessert, they gave it an overdose of phenobarbital and a high-potency tranquilizer. Um, But I just thought maybe that was, like, a cartoon thing that they did, but apparently not, according to this guy. He knows all about it. Bees! Bees oh. to the star! Bees everywhere! God, they're huge! They're ripping my flesh off! Ugh, <laughs> bees. Mm. I got a break. I'll have new found glory tickets for you. They're celebrating the 20th anniversary of Catalyst. Remember that one if you're a fan? So they're going to do that in its entirety. And um, if you want to win, want to go see that band, I'll hook you up coming back. New 